Today, my main purpose is that I want to ask you to think more carefully about the questions that you ask other people. Let's start off easy. I'm going to ask you a really simple yet philosophical question. And I know you guys just had lunch. Maybe you guys are suffering from food coma, but the question is here. Who am I? That's pretty deep, right? Just think for a second. Your brain might not be working, neither is mine, so it's okay. But I'll help you out. Think more. Okay, how many of you here identify with your profession? Please raise your hand if you identify. Profession? Okay, how many of you identify with your geography? Okay, how about your nationality? Your political party? Interesting. Your religion? Now, last but not least, how many of you identify with these personality traits on the board? Whoa! At that moment, a bunch of you raised your hands. And that's good, because you guys are helping me prove my point today. So when people ask me this question, I usually think about a few adjectives. And the first few things that pop into my mind are that I am a female, Asian, student. But what I've been wondering is, why do these particular things come into my head when I am asked this question? Why don't I think about myself as being, I don't know, right-handed? I mean, I am right-handed. And in fact, up to 95% of the world is right-handed. So how weird would it be if you met someone for the first time and you were like, hey, nice to meet you. We should be friends. I'm right-handed, BFFs. They would be really creeped out, and they probably wouldn't want to be your friend either, right? Well, here's the thing. We don't tend to focus so much on the things that don't stand out. The mediocre, the basic, the average, the things that almost everyone possesses. Instead, we tend to focus more on what makes us different, either in a good or bad way. Now, Isa said, my main purpose today is to tell you to think more differently and be sure to reflect on the questions that you ask other people. So let me tell you two personal anecdotes that relate to this. The first one began at Safeway Supermarket. I was super excited in Northern California, shopping with my family, getting all those Pop-Tarts, Twinkies, Jolly Ranchers, Mike and Ikes, all that good stuff. We love candy, right? Yes, yes, we all love candy. Which is perfect, because at that moment, I accidentally bumped into this guy in front of me in the supermarket. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And he was like, gosh. Then he turned to his wife, and he was like, what are these Asians doing here in this American supermarket? Can't they go to Ranch 99 or Chinatown? He didn't use the word Asian. He used the C word, a racial slur, which I will not say, because that's offensive. And that was the first time where I was forced to think about my identity. I know maybe that question was well informed and he was just reminding me, you know, you're in the wrong place, Google Maps is wrong. But, you know, it can also be deemed as offensive or even hurtful. So that was my first story. Now my second story. One summer after that, I went to summer camp. And you all know the drill. When you meet someone new, you don't want to be awkward and just stand there and bask in that silence. So you socialize, which can be hard for me, maybe. But you ask people questions like, where are you from? Or where do you go to school? So we go around the circle, one by one, and we say things like, oh, you know, I'm from California. I'm from the East Coast, just another US city. When it comes to my turn, I say, hey, guys, I'm Caroline, and I'm from Taipei, Taiwan. And this leads to a lot of mixed reactions. Some people go like, ah, oh, Taiwan, I heard of that. Some people don't know where Taiwan is. And some people really don't know where Taiwan is. So they tell me about their love and passion for Thai food. So I got really confused. And then there are the other people, the ones that are like, wait, if you're from Taiwan, then why is your English so good? And then have to explain to them that just because I am from Taiwan doesn't mean I can't speak English properly. Those are the ones who make assumptions about me 
and they are the ones who slip these questions that may come off as offensive or force people to think more about themselves when they don't want to. And, you know, that person treated me really weird during that program. I don't even know why. Did they think of me as foreign or strange or weird or different? I don't know, but I left that program and I was like, bye. <laughs> and I'm not the only one who has been called the C word or been treated differently because according to Pew Research Center's 2010 analysis of the Asian American Community Survey, it has been reported that one out of five Asians have said that they have been felt like they were being treated differently or even discriminated just for their race. And one out of 10 Asian Americans have reported that they have been called an offensive name or a racial slur. And you know, I get it. Sometimes these things may come off as an accident, but that doesn't make them any less harmless. Now, I think that when we respond to these types of questions, we shouldn't just get away with them because, you know, well, this is only me speaking from my perspective as Caroline here. And people from different places who may also be feeling like they're the victim of discrimination might think differently. So I do not have their say. But I do know that discrimination is still a problem, not just in the US, but all over the world. And we see it, it's evident. Part of this comes from the questions that we accidentally pose, other pose to other people, the ones that may slip out of our mouths accidentally and come off as offensive. Some people call these ignorant microaggressions. And when we respond to these, we shouldn't just let it go, like Elsa says from Frozen. We should actually say something about it and speak up, because if we don't, then people will never know that they were offensive or harmful to you, and there will be no change. So those are my two stories. And before these two stories happened, I never thought much about my identity. I'm just Caroline. I like to eat, sleep, not rave, not repeat. Um, that was just me. But after that, I began to think more. Sometimes I just sit there in the sun and I just think, who am I? And there was a day where this question went through my head for multiple times. And it was quite confusing for me, so I just went to sleep that day. But, you know, sleeping solves solutions, right? But if nobody reminded me that I was different, would I still, like, it's not I don't want to be different, but it's that every time I am reminded that I am, why can't I just be a regular person? Have you ever thought of that? Am I weird? Am I normal? I'm not the only one, right? OK, good, good. Well, I think that many of us at the school struggle between the ties between our identities and cultures. It may be one culture, two cultures, three or more. It may be a different culture than what I am in. But the same concept applies. For me, I was born in Mountain View, California, in the northern part of the San Francisco Bay Area. Pretty nice, pretty relaxing. And not long after, I moved to Taipei, Taiwan, and I have been growing up here ever since. Now, you know, I savor my boba milk tea. Who likes boba milk tea? I like it. So I savor that. I also shop at Taiwanese markets. And at the same time, I go to an English-speaking school, and I speak fluent English with my friends and celebrate American holidays. So living in Taipei with a Taiwanese family while going to an English-speaking school means that I navigate between these two cultures on a daily basis. This also helps shape the way that I understand personal and political issues. When I hear that my friend's parents are getting a divorce or an abortion, I understand these decisions through both Confucian and liberal lenses. I think that regardless your personal, political, ethical, anything, background, there should be a certain etiquette that we should all follow when we are asking other people questions. And this is important because this is what we should refer to. And when we think about asking questions, many times we don't really think about how racism, sexism, homophobia, and xenophobia are embedded in the ways that we may not be aware of. They may have consequences and negative effects. And these consequences go far beyond satiating our curiosity at that current moment. If nobody constantly told me that, hey, you're different, Caroline, would I identify with other adjectives than female and Asian? Maybe I would think about myself as pleasant, helpful, personable, fun, hilarious. <laughs> no, 
No? Okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I know that like some of us here have experienced these stories that I talked about. But overall, as a TAS community, I think we are all pretty tolerant and accepting of other cultures and people, which I'm really glad about. But that doesn't mean that we don't sometimes accidentally get into the way of, you know, getting so into our beliefs that we forget to not insult others. We sometimes say things like, I don't want to be like that, I want to be like this. And you think that your opinion is the best. But that's not always true. And we should keep that in mind. Science says that we naturally, as humans, feel the need to be included in something. An author of Huffington Post, Michael Taft, writes that this need to fit in is what leads many of us to stand with the group rather than to stand alone with your own values. I urge you, as an audience, together as a whole, to have a basis for what you believe in and stick true to your beliefs, while also, at the same time, being respectful of other people. Now, I think that this is what will make our society change in a better way. And I hope that together, we can be continuing to move forward to make our society advance forward and being more careful about the questions we ask, being more considerate, open, careful, and always, always being respectful. Ask other people questions like, what do you do in your free time? What's your favorite book? What's your favorite food? Mine's pizza. <clears throat> Get me pizza. And um, ask me questions like, what I'm good at and what I am not. Thank you. Thank you.